It's a nice early start this morning and uh, we're expecting a bit of rain later so I've come down for my first early morning jaunt of the year um, to actually get a few jobs done. Um, let me just show you what we're looking to achieve just this morning in an hour or so before the actual rain kicks in at lunchtime. So the first job is to get these uh, raised beds, this new raised bed which the cold frame is going to go on top of. Um, need to get those painted um, so that they're treated before we go. Oh, looks like I left my spirit level out. And the other job that we need doing And the second job we need to do is to shovel all this into the uh, some buckets into the polytunnel because it's actually nice and dry at the moment um, and I don't want to get it too wet before I have to sieve it. But as you can see, this is the bane of my life. Somebody has completely ripped out the side of this because if I step back and show you, my plot is right on the corner of this up road and people cut round that corner and take out mine corner here so I'm thinking that actually what I'm going to do is actually I've got some of those these old concrete base bars from a uh, uh, fencing so I'm thinking that I might actually just put those around that bottom corner stand them up stand them in the ground and put them around that bottom corner just to stop people taking out that bottom um, part of that that's your new brassica cage but alas that is a job for another day today's day is basically today's jobs is going to be getting that shifted before it gets wet and getting those boxes painted so half past seven got about an hour's time to actually get that done before I need to get back let's see how we get on uh, a bit hot and sweaty now but that's an hour done and we've got the jobs done so it's a beautiful now so you see that in the background beautiful sunrise now on the plot um, let's have a quick look at the uh, jobs so that's the two new beds on top of the uh, other sixth bed so these two beds are the ones that the coal frames are going to go on top of so there's another one of those to build and then have a look down in the polytunnel the bag has gone and in here um, two cold frames there ready to go on top of those uh, boxes in here it looks like a, we're in the middle of a potato harvest really um, but this is all just uh, old soil that we dug out when we were barking and uh, digging out the old beds so that will carry on drying in there and that will lead to what I would say is going to be a satisfactory soil sieving experience because um, when it's nice and dry it will sieve really easily um, so we'll leave that in there for a little bit longer to actually dry out and then when we've got that all ready what we will do is use our soil sieve to actually get that into the new beds um, but for me that's a nice morning on the plot time for me to pack up Go home, have a cup of tea while you can have a look at the nice sunrise. Hi, and welcome back to the allotment. It's a breezy old day down here on a Wednesday, and uh, here to finish these beds off um, let me show you where we got to so we've now got these two beds in place and partially filled they just need topping off with some compost and around here we've got our other large raised bed that just needs a little bit more straw in there and some more soil and then topping off with compost so that is the job for today is to get those beds finished off right it's time for some compost so I've had this covered up so that it doesn't get too wet and uh, and it's super convenient here because we got a roadway all the way around our allotment so Mr Crapper's potting shed is quite happy to come and dump this 
straight here. It's a sort of soil and compost mix. Show you a little bit of it. It's so really, it's a few tricky bits in there, but it's really lovely stuff. Um, and as you can see, they're not skimpy when it comes to actually uh, filling this up. Now, when I normally get this delivered, I normally get this delivered about a couple of weeks in advance of when I want to use it. And that's because the act of actually filling the bags aerates all the soil and it actually starts the composting process off again. Um, so actually, after the first week or so of this, um, it's actually like a mini compost heap. So it's good to leave it a couple of weeks before it actually gets to a, a decent state for using because it's still composting, so you might as well make the most of that. Um, as for the hay, as you see, we're getting through it. We've got a bale and a half left. I had loads of great suggestions about this. Um, well, I use it as a mulch, use it on the chop, um, use it on the pathways on top of the bark. Um, I think what I'm going to go with for most of some of this is a suggestion I got from uh, Joanne Payton, I think it is, um, which was to grow potatoes in it. Um, so I think what we're going to do is we're going to create a bed as well as using potatoes in pots, we're going to create a bed for potatoes and give it a try growing them in straw. So putting them into the soil, covering it up in straw and then just earthing up with straw rather than soil. And we'll give that a go. So uh, if you want to find out how that goes, um, hit the subscribe button. And uh, when we um, do that, you'll see the results later in the year. But for now, let's get some of this on those beds. So there we are, first two cold frames in place. Um, now, the more observant of you and those who are regular watchers will be saying, Steve, you've put them in the wrong place. You're going to put them over there. Um, but it was, as always, there's a change of design. So basically, I was going to make these up myself, these cold frames. And uh, I had managed to try and get hold of some, um, the actual material for it. Um, but then that all fell through. Um, so I decided to actually just get some of these ones instead. Um, since then, I've managed to get the actual material that I would have needed. Um, but I'm going to be using that for my indoor propagator setup now. So these are actually a metre long rather than a metre 20, which means there is enough room at the top there still for the table and chairs. It does encroach on the seating area a little bit, but those who watch me regularly will know that um, when have you ever seen me sitting down at the plot? Not very often. So. What we've got is a base, got this strapped to the top. Um, the other key important thing is we've done is we've taken off the hinges off the back of here and put a rubber strip in and hinged it for the off the top and the side. Um, and that is because we want these to be able to open all the way around. Now, if my high school uh, trigonometry classes were uh, any good, this should fit, so let's give it a try and see if it works. Um, this is all done by measurement. I haven't actually tried this out yet. I should have probably done that before I put the beds in place. But So the idea is, is that we can have this up a little bit like that. But also, when we want to, it should... Look at that! Look at the clearance. Cool. We can just fold these right the way back, and then if necessary, we can get the uh, get in there nice and easy to work on it. And then we just keep those down. And if we want to put some netting on and around and that's a good job. So uh, that all looks uh, pretty good to me. And uh, we've got two of those. What I will be doing is getting some elastic tie on here. Um, it does come with these like sort of brackets that come up here, but I'm not particularly confident that they're, if it gets a good gust of wind there, they're hold in place. Um, so <clears throat> I'm gonna get some bungee cord, some elastic bungee cord, and have that under there and there, and then put some blocks in there so that it actually is elasticated and tied down to there. Um, but there, that's a good job. We've got one more of those to do. And that means that the aluminium bed that's going over there next to the, uh, IBC tank is back. So that having been shelved is now back on plan. Um, and that is where also part of that bed is also where I'm thinking of doing that straw potato trial. So that's it for me for the time being at the plot. Got a bit of tidying up to do and everything. 
Um, and the other thing that I need to do is, unfortunately, on my potatoes, I was planning on just keeping those in the garage in the dark and not really chitting them at all um, and leaving it till late in the season because I just don't want like trays and trays of potatoes hanging around the house in the windowsills. Um, unfortunately, that's going to have to change because um, I had a look at them this morning and a couple of the varieties, I think the Charlottes and I think it's either the um, Maris Piper or the um, is it Cara ones um, are starting to produce some uh, chits on them. Um, so I can't leave them in the garage in the dark, otherwise they'll end up with massively long um, roots. So I'm going to have to sort out some trays to take home and get those chitted up. I've got about eight varieties of potatoes, two main crops. Well, I say eight, it's eight plus one. Um, so we've got um, two main crops, a couple of salad type tomatoes like the charlottes and the, I think it's pentel and javelin. Um, and then we've got some four other early crops. And the one additional extra one is the uh, single seed potato challenge potato, um, which we'll be uh, looking at. And I'll give you some more details in a later video. Okay, well, for me, that's all down at the plot. Let's have a quick pan around and see how we're looking. So we've got the main bed filled and the two new beds all in place. So it's a good job. Thanks for joining me and we'll see you again soon.